it's it very clearly says the watts of payout is the copy of like the bonuses and stuff from the other pools but it, it's the amount of hedron burnt divided by the share rate of that day so it would be if it was a trillion it'd be a trillion divided by twenty five thousand. yeah i believe that the the twenty five thousand and then times 10 which is really two hundred fifty thousand, is for the amount of icosa that you get on the buyback and that's to oh on the buyback oh, okay so so that's different than the watts of payout i, I reread it like twice because i was that's why i've got gotten so bullish on watts is because like when you go and just do the what the, the paper says it's just like the payouts are going to be good icosa kind of hyper inflates and then gets more rare over time is what my understanding is uh yes yeah and what i mean as the share rate moves forward then yeah yeah it gets more rare as the share rate moves forward which the share will always move forward so that's what right. makes it more rare and since the buyback is actually taking it by two hundred and fifty thousand, then its availability of being advantageous gets more and more rare even faster by 10 by 10 times yes as a matter of fact yes and then it kind of like forces people to emergency end state because there's no hex to be sold uh, dude man looking at that hedron bot man man you, you're seeing i know it like two million hex isn't an insane amount of money or anything but it's just like i'm seeing two million five million hex a day just being locked for 15 years dude that, yep. that's insane and that's every time somebody end stakes like fucking the uh, the share rate ratchets up i think they're pretty much done with all the artwork and i think alex said that he's ready to start working on a lot of that stuff in like the next week or so so yeah nice dude honestly if i could buy a car i think the next car that i want is, is uh like i want like a classic american muscle car like i was looking at some of the old school camaros that are like 30 40 grand that's doable if i could buy one of those i'll get a watts of tattoo but yeah the watts of pool is like it's going to be a sick ass payout you're like if a trillion's burnt it comes out to 42 million and then you just divide it by the number of nfts and then take the average yeah i just went and looked at it and uh we're right dude the buyback has the formula with the calculation to have it advanceable hedron divided by share rate with an extra zero at the end of it and that promotes the amount of icosa that you get and that's just for the buyback but for how actual icosa is minted into existence is amount of hedron burn divided by the t-share rate exactly if a trillion is burnt in this event that means each million points will earn uh, approximately two icosa so for every dollar that you put into the watts of pool you'll get two dollars at that point in time. yeah as long as icosa is at this prices yes <laughs> this is the hey give me I told you ETH and I'll give you two. <laughs> but it's for real. So, I mean, I don't know. If you did the math I, I'm buying at two or like really close to two. That's my average right now. But like I'm buying because there's going to be another buyback. There's going to be more Hedron burnt in the future. Like these things are going to start really yielding Icosa. I think they're, they're going to they have to yield better Icosa than the actual like Hedron staking pool because God will hasn't bought up all the fucking shit. I lost my staking position in both Hedron and Icosa over time, but my Watsa is going up. You know that people are going to hate you in about a year and a half or two when you keep <laughs> talking about this stuff. You know that, right? Uh, they're going to think that you're dangerous because then the newcomers in are going to be like, what about this guy that has all this Icosa because he just has all these Watsas and he keeps talking about it. Like maybe there will come a time when we, you know, we're saying like, maybe we shouldn't talk about T-shares at all and like just like talk about the 38% APY and that's about it, right? Yeah. You just stick with the logistics of it and, and the necessity of it. And then here we have kind of the same situation with the Watsas all in, in and of itself. Like we can talk about it when telling people where they can go buy for their entry position when we're selling them for four or five times the price. I'm saying like later on when they go through some of these cycles and they've been minted buttloads in Icosa and then people are like, holy shit, I wish I would have had one. Then a year and a half, two years later, when people can hate you, you can be like, well, yeah, if you hate me, you can have one of mine, but you're going to be charged five times the price. <laughs> As any bonuses are minted in the Icosa world, it's minted to the Watts of pool and the Watts of pool only for all the bonuses. Somebody ends a big giant stake, like Godwell ends his Hedron stake where he's making Icosa every day and he gets a 20% bonus. That 20% bonus is going to get minted to just the Watts of pool. Oh, oh yeah, baby. And you can never get diluted. You can, yeah. Dude, your, your percentage of the ownership of the protocol can only really go up in theory. There'll probably be less rewards in the future, but your 
percentage of the pool won't get diluted. You only get stronger. Dude, like, because, like, you get god whales bonuses, you get all the whale bonuses without having to be a whale. Well, not only that, but anytime anyone turns in an HSI into the buyback and has a 5555 on it and it gets its 10% bonus of Icosa for that, when it mints it into existence for those folks, or if it has a 10x value on it and it gives them another 10% so they can have a maximum of 20% bonus for every HSI that gets turned in, that bonus also gets copied and minted and handed to the Watson pool. I actually didn't know that, but I assumed that, mm -hmm. like, but knowing that makes me even more happy. <laughs> that's, why, that's why day one yield was so nuts, because there was literally like 20,000 T-shares worth of HSIs that were turned into the contract at all different various bonuses, ranging from one year all the way to 15 years. When Pulse Chain launches, we're going to have so many other types of tools to be able to use that actually allows for us to use Hex with those protocols. So people are going to do some crazy shit, leveraged, you know, protocols. But like right now, we don't even have that option on the Ethereum network for any of those things. So they don't even look at Hex when it comes to that as far as allowing for people to use it. But now we will. Like people will come in and buy Hex just so that they can utilize those protocols. So that's bullish. Dude, I got my buddy to understand Hex, do 15 year stakes. He understands how an AMM works. He understands like all like of Hedron. He He's done really well. And we're in a bear I'll market. be real. You, you, you told me like earlier about your uh, Hedron like interest. I think you're going to be really glad looking back and you're not going to have a care in the world because you bought Hex at 20 cents, but you locked in a 10x multiplier on your Hedron on all of your stakes. If Hedron goes to a hundredth of a penny, bro, like if it goes to a thousandth of a penny, have you done the moon math on that, bro? Those stakes are going to produce you like insane amounts of money. I think your amount of Hedron, if you hold properly and do the right things, I think you're going to look back and be like, holy shit, that was like one of the best decisions I've ever made. You just have to be a little patient on it. I think some of the things that fucked me with my DCA when I was early into Hex was like I would build pools of Hex to make my stakes because there's like something inside of me that's just has like this internal competition with myself on my own stakes. So after I go make one and then I DCA into a liquid pool, I would notice like share rate jumps were about to happen. And because I knew that and I knew that I was going to lose value in the shares I was able to lock in, that it would cause for me to jump early on some of the stakes that I made. And I kind of, I saw, yeah, I guess in at the time I would have been like, ah, this is probably a mistake on a ladder that I could just be making. But instead I employed it earlier than I would have liked to. Does that make sense? On, on the days that I wanted to actually have it so that they were ending in a certain respect. I couldn't have it be perfect, right? You just couldn't. So I would just extend them or whatever it needed to happen. The psychology of just understanding what the share rate does and how it works and all that, like ended up being the all encompassing reason why you made all your choices in the first place. Especially when you see all where all the other big stakes are ending, right? If you're going to set your stuff up so that way they're ending to front run somebody else, right? Because you don't want to have your stakes ending while all the big guys have theirs ending if you're trying to extract a certain percentage of the value off the top of it, right? I think he draws the bigger reason for people to sell their hex, unfortunately, because if you truly understand hex and it's all about shares, well, Hedron buys you shares. I think I hate saying this because Richard Hart took time out of his day to change my life. But if your goal is to get a lot of hex or a lot like, dude, I want I'll be real. The reason I'm here is because I love hex. But like right now, like if you want to buy a ton of shares, the best currency to buy all those shares and hold them, it's Hedron right now. I, like you might have to wait. You might have to hold for a year or two. I don't know what the market's going to do. But like, if we ever get closer to parity, well, you just get more shares, unfortunately. I hate saying that. I mean, look, like ETH forked, right? There's a proof of work chain with Hex, Icosa, and Hedron all working at 100% uptime on the other side. And it's like the only thing on that chain that's keeping it alive. Look what's happening. And it's like, these things are all tied together. Yeah, if you're using Hedron as it's meant to be as a currency, then you have the opportunity to purchase HSIs that have Hex locked into them in the liquidation auction, which are shares, which is what he's saying. What's up, Price? I sent you a message on uh, Icosa about the T-share. When, uh, let's say, one trillion uh, Hedron is get burned, you add, you need to add one zero. There were 3.4 Hedron get burned, so it's about 40,000 40, Icosa per, per, per day. That's the seed liquidity function that, that operates that differently. The way that Icosa is minted into existence through the pools is it looks at how much Hedron was burned per day and then divides it by the share rate. Just the share rate, not 200 and some odd thousand, but just the share rate for that day.
day. When you're using the buyback function, it does it with that extra added of 10 times 10. And the seed liquidity, where it's actually a hidden function in ICOSA, not the benevolent function that's the hidden function in Hedron, which is actually allowed for all that to be burned in the first place. But when it distributes that, the mechanism on the, the solution for the function itself is how much do you actually supply? And then you distribute that across however many days. And then that, it, that would also have that function for since it's minting ICOSA that would have that times 10. So that way it's actually making that particular function less and less advantageous, just like the share rate does with people, but by 10 times more at that moment for that function. Is the same calculation when when some people bid on the HSI and get the Hedron get burned? Well, see, here's the thing is since the calculation does it at 000 UTC every day, then all of the Hedron that was already previously burned can't really make any ICOSA because it needs to happen on a daily fact. The code says it needs to happen on a daily function. So this other hidden function was made underneath it, the seed liquidity function, where they were able to actually take the calculation of what was previously burned and then add it into the seed liquidity type of thing. So that way there was a bunch of yield to be had for the future of ICOSA, right? And the SA has the availability of being able to do that. And it's like written into the code this way. And that just happens to be the way that it was. And if it decides it wants to do that again, that seed liquidity function that's there for anybody to use that's a public function on the blockchain, um, it'll happen the same exact way. Like I can go do the same thing and it'll just increase everybody's pool that they currently have.